The Baggies Podcast, giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. Now available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Hello and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast, where we're giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion today. A bit of a post-match reaction yet again. We had one against Leicester. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you watch it. But today, it's all about Villa. Well, not about Villa, but it's about West Bromwich Albion Villa. A two-all draw between these two sides at Villa Park. We're going to be looking at all that. We're going to be hearing your reaction, uh, especially to one particular mistake later on in the game, which cost us a valuable three points. We're going to be going through that. We're going to be going through the rest of the game. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts and sharing yours about the game. If you're new around here, make sure you're dropping a follow, a subscribe, whatever podcast platform or YouTube watching platform you're listening on or watching on. Make sure you're leaving us a nice review if you've enjoyed the podcast. And leave your thoughts on our Twitter page at the Baggies Pod or at Louis Ben underscore. I'd really love to hear them. However, let's get straight into this post-match reaction pod of Aston Villa versus West Brom and Jalbion. Oh dear. Match reaction on the Baggies podcast, giving you up-to-date analysis and opinion on every Albion game. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube to get notified whenever we release a new episode of the Baggies podcast. Not a defeat this time, not a defeat. Let's, let's get that first and foremost. It's not a defeat, it's a draw. But it feels like a defeat, doesn't it? It doesn't feel like we've uh, got a point out of that game. It feels like we've lost. But we're going to go through the lineup first. I'm going to get your thoughts on it. I'm going to share my thoughts on it. And I'm going to share your thoughts on that incident towards the end of the game between Bartley and Johnston, which inevitably cost us three points at Villa Park. I'm going to be talking about that, getting all the match reaction. But yeah, let's get straight into this. And let's go through the lineup first. I mean, we'll start. With Johnston in goal, I thought he had some good moments, good saves. One on one with Watkins was probably the probably the best one of the game. Um, there was a a chance, there were a couple of chances. I think McGinn had a shot. Uh, Elmer Hamadi also had a shot, which was a really good save from Johnston, uh, and he did well um, up until those last few minutes, which we'll talk about later. I'm going to keep you hanging on with that one. Bartley made some good tackles, some good blocks, but. Yeah, again, towards the end of the game, his concentration and his will to win completely just went out the window. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. I'm still going to keep you hanging on. It's kind of Townsend at left back. A few moments where he just, I don't know how, he just ends up slipping over quite a lot. Um, but... Yeah, it's, yeah, he was he was good, Connor Townsend, very battling, very tenacious. Same with Darnell Furlong on that right-hand side, same with him. Very battling, very tenacious, but somehow Townsend always ends up on the floor. It's just a bit confusing for me. I don't know how he does it, but every time he'll end up on the floor. I, I don't know don't know why, don't know what, what for, but he just ends up slipping over. But yeah, I thought the back four, sorry, Ajayi as well, um, I, I, he gave away the penalty. I thought it was really clumsy. Uh, we'll talk about the penalties now. Actually, let's go for that. Um, the pe- the penalty was the first penalty was I think if you give somebody the opportunity to go down like that, you're making a mistake and you're giving the referee a choice to make that sort of decision. However, I thought Ajayi perhaps he, he could have just let Barkley just, just sort. He wasn't shooting. He wasn't. He was actually going away from goal, from what I know. He's like shifting to the left, away from the goal. So all Bart, uh, all Ajay, sorry, has to do is shepherd him away. He has to keep goal side. He has to keep, uh, keep stand up basically, not make a tackle, not dive in, not be rash. And he's got us. He's he's got no penalty to talk about there because he's given Bartley, the, Barkley, sorry, the option to go down. And of course he's going to take it. Of course you're going to take it. But I think that, I think it was a harsh, harsh penalty call. I think there's not a lot of contact in there. But Ajayi has gone bundling in. He's clumsy, and he's toppled. Well, he hasn't really toppled Barkley over, but he's sort of made contact with him. It's not a lot of it, but in this day and age, you've got to give those ones. Um, we'll go into the midfield now. But yeah, Ajayi for me it was very clumsy. I don't think he's he read the game particularly well. Maybe that's because he hasn't perhaps played as often. But he did not read the game well in that situation. And then a couple of others actually. There are a few others where. Perhaps he did not read the game as well as I thought he perhaps might. Um, Yakushlu was had some really good touches of the ball, really good tackles, very battling. I mean, 
what more can you say about him? He's a good player. He's not been at his best over these past couple of games. Leicester, he was pretty bad, but this game he wasn't wasn't as good as he has been, but still a very good performance for me. I thought he worked he worked really hard. He was very good combating those creative threats of you know you've got energy in that mid Villa midfield of uh, McGinn. You've got Douglas Louise in there, who's a very good ball player. You've got um, you've got even in front of them. You've got Barkley, who's a even though he's not been in very good form, and he in fact looks like he's not not really bothered about playing for Aston Villa. It was good that Yakushlu still kept an eye on him and still kept things uh, ticking over with with Barkley. In terms of uh, other midfielders, Maitland Niles um, had a chance in that first half after a bit of magic from Mateus Pereira, who we'll talk about a bit in a second, uh, and had a shot which was sort of smashed straight at the keeper. I thought, yeah, there's a, it's a bit of a reason why Maitland Niles might not have scored for so long. And it's because of those types of shots. I thought, yeah, I thought he, he didn't play too badly. I thought there were some good touches of the ball, some really good running in there, some really good energy from him. But, however, I think that he did struggle a little bit with the combative force of Villa's midfield. There was a lot of giving the ball away, even though there were lots of quality touches as well. But there was a lot of giving the ball away from Maitland-Niles. And there was uh, quite a lot of dallying on the ball and as well so yeah that ended up with us losing possession a few times we also decided to bring Colin Gallagher into the side for Matt Phillips today um so yeah that was an interesting sub an interesting change for in the lineup for that I think Gallagher just brings a bit more energy and he did bring energy his quality on the ball is not not really not really as good as perhaps other midfielders in our side but his energy is better his energy is unmatched his fitness levels are through the roof he just doesn't stop. He'll go into everything with absolutely no composure, but he'll just take, try and take the ball off everybody. Even if like it's the goalkeeper and he's down the other end of the pitch, he'll still try and sprint after him. But yeah, Gallagher, I think, yeah, just pretty battling from him again. Um, Robinson, not as effective as he has been recently, but still did the, did the yards up and down that wing until he was bought off for Phillips later on in the game. Uh, Mateus Pereira was really, really good. For me, he was the best player on the pitch by miles. He was toying with the Villa players. Uh, I just kept crying out for us to pass the ball to him because we just kept avoiding him for some reason. I don't know why, because every time he had the ball, he had the Villa defence on strings. But for me, Pereira today, yesterday sorry, proved his worth and proved his ability um, to play at Premier League level. He was just superb. He was working the ball around the Villa players. That skill move against Douglas Louise by the corner flag where he just back heels it, just like he's not even there. I mean, some of the uh, the free kick he had that hit the hit the underside of the crossbar. I mean, it's how much more unlucky can you get? But he was really good today. Uh, yesterday, sorry, Pereira. He was fantastic. He worked really hard as well. But yeah, we didn't pass him the ball as uh, anywhere near as much as I'd have liked to have seen it, seen him seen him seen us do because he was pulling the strings as i said every time he got the ball he was making something happen every time he got the ball he was doing something with it so yeah it, it was unfortunate that we didn't try and in, integrate him more into the game but yeah for me Pereira did really well and played really well and by Diagne up front was another story because he did I, I don't know whether they've actually given him the goal i will have to check whether they've given him the goal um for for Mbaye Diagne, let's have let's actually have a look at this one, um, because I'm not actually sure whether they've given it to it, whether they've actually given it to him. Um, I think that I think they gave it to him, but I'm not completely sure. Uh, no, it's given as a Tyrone Mings own goal. I was going to say that did seem a very Tyrone Mings own goal ish. Can I just talk about the Villa centre back pairing because I've thought, heard really good things about Esri Konza. He gave away the penalty for Ian Little Met and Nars, who I'll talk about actually now because um, yeah, that was a l l so little contact, less than the Barkley incident. I think there was a little stamp, on, uh, not even a stamp, like a little like, touch of the toe, but he went down and the ref gave it. And he's really the ref really set the bar with that Barkley penalty um, about how much. Um, much contact you need to go down because he was obviously saying oh right well I don't really care how much contact you get if you go down I'll give it he's setting that benchmark and if you know players see that benchmark they'll just fall down at every opportunity and that's what that, that that's what happened with Maitland Niles for me he, he he just sort of saw that benchmark and he saw well he's giving that one down there so he's probably going to give this one down here but yeah for me uh Maitland Niles um yeah he he sort of 
caused caused a prob caused a problem there for Villa and and won that penalty. But Mings, it's Tyrone Mings, England footballer, should not have, uh, should not have ended up with that particular particular. Um, sorry, uh, we should not end up with Mings in the England side. I thought he was particularly poor. He was particularly awful. Actually, I thought he was. Yeah, I thought Conza wasn't much better, but I think I don't, I don't really know how he ends up in the England team uh, most of the time because it's probably because he's left-footed, he's tall. But yeah, I th I can't don't get the fascination with that. In terms of um, talk, we'll talk a bit more, more about Diagne because I didn't actually finish, but he was fairly fairly bad to be honest. He, he the ball keeps getting pumped up to him and he doesn't jump. I mean. You can say what you like about uh, Solomon Rondon when he was at the Albion, about how he didn't score, but you know he he did the hold up work. And Bayer Diagne isn't really scoring, but he's do not even doing the hold up work anymore. But he's is he, when he's got the ball at his feet, he's quite good. He's got some really good technique, uh, not in front of goal, but when, when you know you know you need a good ball out wide or you need a good through pass, perhaps he's quite good. But when the ball's being pumped up to him he doesn't seem to jump and he's taller than most center halves what is he like six foot four Diagne he's massive but he's not challenging for the ball with most of these center halves and that's what you need you need the ball to stick up there whilst you're under pressure defensively and you need somebody big strong who's going to just hold the ball up pass it over and then the ball is yours again and it relieves the defensive pressure and we need that as much as possible because as we saw last night we can't. Well, the defense is, you know, is not strong enough to last that long without conceding. So you need the ball to stick up there, up top, whilst we're trying to relieve that pressure of defense. It's yeah, it's a bit frustrating, but we can move on from that. Um, in terms of the game, we conceded that penalty early on to Anwar Gelsi, who scored. We then uh, went down the other end, and they with they, that Villa conceded a penalty, and Mateus Pereira, the magician, scored. Then. After that, we went on and took the lead through the own goal from Tyrone Mings uh, with, with Diagne, who, who just left in acres of space, and Mings just came across and sort of tapped it into his own net. It was a bit bit odd, actually. Uh, and then Keenan Davis scored late on, and I think that's a good point to sort of go into the match reaction section, sorry, the fan reaction section of the podcast, because you guys have been getting your thoughts in about that particular incident towards the end of the game. And I think that makes for a fairly nice, fairly nice juncture for me to go and get a cup of tea whilst you, uh, whilst I read your comments and read them out in the next segment of the podcast. So yeah, here's the fan reaction section of the podcast. Fan reaction on the Baggies podcast, giving you the chance to share your thoughts on all things Albion. Email a voice note or a video clip with your thoughts to the Baggies podcast at gmail.com for a chance to be shown in next week's episode. Fan reaction on the Baggies podcast, giving you the fans of West Bromwich Albion a voice. <laughs> Back again. Time for some fan reaction now. Got your comments on my screen now, ready for your thoughts on that particular incident. Now, we know what happened. A miscommunication between Bartley and Johnston um, ended up with issues. And Keenan Davis came and tapped the ball into, into the goal. So, was it Bartley's fault? Was it Carl Bartley's fault? Or was it Sam Johnston's fault? Let's go through that now. Let's read some comments. So, we got... One coming in from Chris Letkowski of the Liquidator podcast, another Albion podcast, who says both or neither. Communication is imperative. Mistakes happen. Uh, Andy from New Hampshire has commented to that. Totally right. Mistakes happen. Just have to manage the situation. So late in the game, a cute move by Villa, getting Watkins wide to win a header with Townsend, an area that's hurt us a few times this season. Um, it's some things will never change. Uh, Liam Dunn says, is it harsh to say that Townsend doesn't do enough either on the first header back across? Uh, I, th I think he could have done a lot more. I think that happens a lot, as Andy Andy's just said there. It, it's punished us quite a few times. A little cute ball over to the back post, and you isolate uh, either Townsend or Furlong with a striker who's a bit taller. Not, but Watkins isn't great in the air, let's be honest. But um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty annoying. Um that, that ended up getting into that situation in the first place, that ended up being cut across. Um, Cohen Stokes says, Bartley's taught two things, taught as a defender, is one, don't let it bounce, and two, if in doubt, get it out. Um, 
yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's, you have to clear your lines. Let's firstly address that. You have to clear your lines. No matter if, if there's a shout from Johnston, then you don't clear your lines. If he comes and collects it, it's a fairly simple ball to come and collect, let's be honest. It's in this, inside the six-yard area. But if, he's, if Johnston, it's, it's a communication, as Chris has just said there. If, if you don't call for one, if, you, if, if one doesn't call, say, I'm going to clear it or I'm going to come out and catch it, then you're not really you're not really being effective in your position because you you need to have that communication there are too many times now where albion players have chances to go out and block the ball go out and clear the ball and they hesitate they look to each other and go oh are you going to go or are you going to go or, or, or and then nobody goes and we all end up just stepping off that's how Nacho scored last week at leicester there are three players in front of him and none of them are actually rushing at the ball they're all stood in a line, and he's picked the gap between them. And that's the same with what happened. What's happened between Bartley and Johnston? The ball has gone between them, and they've got. Oh no! You're gonna. No, no, you're gonna get it, or you're gonna get it. So take initiative. Take your own responsibility for your actions and your defensive work, and clear the ball, or come out and catch the ball. It's. I don't think it's. Ne- it's. It's neither's fault. Let's be honest. They're both equally, um, in my opinion, to blame. Because I think either of them could have done something about it, but neither did. They both hesitated. It happens far too much this season. It's happened so many times. There's defenders looking at each other going, oh, you, you're going to go and get it. You're going to go and pick that ball up. Are you going to go and clear it? Yeah, and there's no nobody actually ends up doing anything. And the ball ends up in the back of our net too many times. Uh, another comment coming in here from, this one comes in from C. Hawthorns goes bitter but he thinks it's a bit of both if Bartley puts it in row Z, it's a non-event Sam looked uncomfortable with those in front of him tonight we were relegated weeks ago just not mathematically primary school defending that's why we are where we are yeah I have to agree I think yeah Johnston does look hesitant in those situations I think it's a a lack of communication you need to just say are you going to have it are you going to have it um um you know it's 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 an you know I feel like it's um yeah, it's just it's just you need to you need to um you you need to be communicating. It doesn't matter what situation you're in, whether it's you're about to block a shot or whether you're about to clear a ball or whether you're about to make a tackle, you shout for it or you shout leave it or my or Bartley's ball or something like that. Even if it's like a tackle that two people are about to go and make, or a bit of communication wouldn't go far astray to be honest. Um, yeah, so I feel like we need to um. I feel like we need to do a bit more in that sort of area. Um, Jay Lee has said both, but Bartley shouldn't even be dealing with that there. Sam should be taking that, but mistakes happen from Bartley's reaction. Seem to be hesitant in dealing with it. I think he expected Sam to come. It's in a six-yard box. Let's be fair about that. I think Bartley should have cleared it, and I think or Johnston should have come across it. I can't really make my mind up over which one should have happened. But somebody should have done something. Somebody should have taken that initiative. It doesn't really matter who. I don't care who's cut. I don't care if it's in row Z or whether the ball's nestled in Sam Johnston's arms or even if it's just booted away. I couldn't, I couldn't give a toss, quite frankly. It should be out. It should just be gone. We shouldn't be, I shouldn't be sat here talking about two all draw. I should be sat here talking about what a great 2-1 two, two, one win in a decent Albion performance where... Pereira has really shone, and we've beat we've beaten a team that are local to us, and we've got some bragging right. Be I don't class it as a local derby at all. They're local, but it's not really a derby. Um, yeah. Mark Abel says the ball came into Bartley, therefore it's his job to deal with it. Controlling it and expecting Johnston to understand and collect the ball from his feet was completely the wrong decision. On 92 minutes, just boot it out. It's a difficult ball to deal with as well. I think. We need to appreciate that, that it's difficult to deal with. It's a bouncing ball in the six-yard box. It's just communication. Um, yeah, Rich Bevan has actually made a good point. It's, it sort of echoes what I said. Johnson should definitely should have come for it. But as a defender, if you don't hear a shout, you make no assumptions and take no risks. Have it and, and get rid. Job done. Um, yeah, I think... Um, they're both, yeah, as Chris has just said here, both are e- equally culpable. Yet again, the defence were put under prolonged pressure due to the abject failure of us forwards, specifically Diagne and Robinson, to hold up, hold up the ball and pose any threat. We may as well have played with nine men. That's exactly what I've just said there um, earlier on. Um, yeah, it, it was a ta- it was a fairly simple task to be honest, um, but. Diagne and Robinson. I, I, I put it more on Diagne because he's the bigger lad out of the two. Robinson is built to 
run around the Agne and cause issues around the Agne and not necessarily um, hold the ball up. But the Agne was not good enough with holding that ball up, and he did add pressure onto the defence for onto the defence for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Um, I mean, it was a difficult one for me. I, I, just, I just don't think we should have ended up losing that. Ended up getting a draw out of the game. I mean, it was just not good enough. Not not good enough whatsoever. I think Bartley should clear, but the keeper should also be commanding that space. It's neither's fault, but neither should uh, be let off. If you get what I mean. So it's not one of you. You can't really blame one of them, in my opinion. You've got to look at them both. Because Bartley should clear, but Johnson should come out and catch. It's you know as simple as that. Um, the first thing you should say is Bartley should have cleared it. But then again, if he's thinking, oh, he's in, I'm in the six-yard box here, Johnson's going to come out. And fair play to Keenan Davis because he's taken the initiative off our uh, appalling defensive play and he's come in and taken the ball away. This one comes in from Arjun Kang who says, Bartley, he has to get, he has to get rid of Sam Johnson hesitated due to Bartley not clearing. If he gets rid, we have three points and we're laughing. Yeah, I think there's so much hesitation. As I said, there's so much hesitation in that side, full stop, because there's players who are going to clear it or block the ball and nobody ends up doing it and it just ends up going in the back of our net far too many times. It, it happens so often. There's no communication. There's a real lack of communication and it's very, very frustrating. I mean, I don't know what, you, what more you can do as a defender but uh, than just come out and take initiative. Even if you're the worst defender in the world, you come out and bo block the ball. You come out and make the ball, uh, make the ball yours, or make the ball go in the stand. It doesn't matter where it goes. Um, it just needs to go somewhere that's not in the back of your net. And far too many times, it's ended up in the back of the net, and therefore we've lost the game. Uh, and you know that's just what happened. That's just what happens, unfortunately. Um, I mean, yeah, disappointing whatsoever. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, we've been playing re well in recent weeks and we've just let it go now. You know, it's just very annoying. I mean, we don't know what to do about it, but uh, it looks like a trip down to the championship now. I can't see any more particularly winnable games. I mean, you've got games against West Ham, Arsenal, Leeds. Um, you've got one against Wolves next week as well. Wolves is a big one. I mean, I hope we win just for rivals' sake, but I can't, I can't see us winning. I think it'll be a draw, and there's plenty of other teams that I think we could definitely beat. Definitely not beat. Sorry, um, but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's difficult, but it's it's not doable anymore. I don't think. I think it's going to take a miracle. It's going to have to be so many. Like, going to have to gather. Brighton or Burnley points or Newcastle point deduction at the way we're going in order to drag anybody else into it. But yes, um, in terms of manager next season, let's have a little chat about that because my thoughts are Allardyce should stay if we, if he wants to. However, if he doesn't want to, I definitely go and bring in somebody younger, somebody fresher. But I don't trust that board with hiring another manager because I feel we'll end up with somebody like Michael Appleton and I don't think that's particularly great great look on us at all but for me I think um, I take Allardyce next season for me I think we're favourites to go up if Allardyce you know is there I think obviously Allardyce is great so I think um, I think you know he's got he's got a team here that he's worked with he's got a team that he knows well even if it's not his favourite favourite team that he's ever managed in his life I'm sure it's far from it but he's got a chance here to do something different. Go go up via the championship. He's done it twice, sorry, three times I think. Um, all by the playoffs, however. But I think we'll give. I think a good chance. we we'll we'll have. We'll, you know, I, I think we'll see see what happens. But I, I take Allardyce next season. Don't know what you think, but feel free to drop your thoughts on my Twitter page at the Baggies Pod, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and we can have a chat about that. But that brings us to the end of this week's episode of the Baggies podcast. We'll be back again. I think the Wolves game is on a... Is it on a... I'm going to have to check that now. Uh, WBA Wolves. Uh, I think it's on a Monday night, as far as I'm aware. I'm not completely sure. Uh, it was originally on Saturday, May the 1st, but now on May the 3rd. So that means it'll be a Monday night kickoff. So we'll try and get, I'll try and get something to, out to you by Monday or Tuesday, a bit of match reaction. And we'll see how that goes for us. And 
hopefully we'll have a good result to talk about again after a couple of weeks now, a couple of games now with not so good results. But a massive thank you for joining me for this episode of the Baggies podcast. It's been a pleasure having you here and I hope to see you again for another episode. Make sure you hit and subscribe or follow on your podcast platforms to make sure you get all the podcasts delivered straight to your inbox. If you're subscribed to us, Spotify will tell you or Apple Podcasts will tell you when there's a new episode out. So if that's something you're interested in, if you want to listen to more episodes, make sure you do it because, you know, I'm here all week, folks. I'm here all week. Listen, Go back and listen to our former player episodes as well. We've got had some fantastic guests. We've had Richard Sneaks on, Gianni Zyverloon, Simon Cox, Liam Ridgewell, Mark Antoine Fortune. We've had Danny Gavitt on as well. So make sure you go back and listen to these former player episodes. I highly recommend it. And I'll see you in the next one, Baggies fans. Hope you have a good week. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.